This video was made possible thanks to the generosity of our awesome patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Hello everyone and welcome to another gameplay video brought to you by Affinity for Commander. My name's Martin. And my name is Alex. This week we are celebrating reaching 5,000 subscribers by playing a gameplay variant chosen by our rare and mythic tier patron supporters, EDH Cube. For those of you that don't know, Cube is essentially a 4 round draft where players build 60 card decks and start on 30 life. This particular cube was created by Phil, a judge at our local game store, and is by far the best cube we have seen to date. Good job, Phil. So without further ado, let's see who is the best drafter amongst our commander playgroup. My partner commanders are Thrasios, Trison Hero, and Rehan, Last of the Absan. I keep an opening hand of Nylea, God of the Hunt, Krav the Unredeemed, Status or Statue, Windgrace's Judgment, Paleano, the High City, an Island, and a Forest. Phil's commander is Sisse, with a light captain. His opening hand contains Embodiment of Spring, Heart of Kiran, Ugrin the Ineffable, Farm to Market, Temple of Epiphany, a Plains, and a Mountain. Luke chose Narset, Enlightened Master, as his commander, and kept a hand containing Melentis Charlatan, Jeskai Ascendancy, Render Silent, Two Plains, and Two Islands. And finally, Dylan's partner commanders are Timna the Weaver and Ravos Soul Tender. His opening hand consists of Kithian, Hero of Akron, Divinity of Pride, Legion's Landing, Prophet and Loss, Two Plains, and a Swamp. Dylan wins the die roll and then starts things off by playing Plains. He then casts Kithian, Hero of Akros, and passes to Phil. Phil plays Temple of Epiphany and scries the top card of his library to the bottom. He then ends his turn. Luke plays an island and then passes the turn. I play Pagliano, the High City, which taps for black, white or green thanks to choices which were made during the draft. I then pass to Dylan. Dylan plays a Swamp and then casts Legion's Landing. He creates a 1-1 vampire token with lifelink and then moves to combat. Dylan attacks Luke with Kithian, dealing him 2 damage, and then passes the turn. Phil casts Embodiment of Spring, and then plays a Plains. He then ends his turn. Luke plays a Plains, and then passes to Martin. I play an Island, and then cast one of my commanders, Thrasios, Trison Hero. I then pass the turn. Dylan plays a Plains, and then casts one of his commanders, Timna the Weaver. Moving to combat, Dylan attacks Luke with Kithian and his Vampire, dealing him 3 damage. He gains a life thanks to his Vampire's lifelink, which he then loses to Timna's ability in order to draw a card. Dylan then ends his turn. Phil casts Flower, searching his library for a forest and putting it into his hand. He then plays the forest and passes to Luke. Luke casts Melitus Charlatan and then passes the turn. I play a forest and then cast Duskwatch Recruiter. I then end my turn. Dylan plays a Plains and then moves to combat. He attacks Phil with all of his creatures, and Legion's Landing transforms into Atando the First Fort. Phil blocks Timna with his elemental and sacrifices it to his own ability before damage occurs. He puts a Swamp into play tapped and takes 3 damage, and Dylan then moves to his post-combat main phase. Dylan loses a life to draw a card with Timna's ability, cancelling out the life he gained from his vampire, and then transforms Kithian into Gideon Battleforged. He uses Gideon's plus 2 ability, forcing Martin's recruiter to attack Gideon in his next turn, and then cast Divinity of Pride. Now that is a scary card to see on turn 4 in Commander. Happy with his turn, Dylan passes to Phil. Phil plays a mountain and then casts Heart of Kiran. He then passes the turn. Luke plays a mountain and then ends his turn. Martin forgets to flip his Duskwatch recruiter, which he kicks himself for later, and moves to his turn. I play a Swamp and then cast Statue, destroying Divinity of Pride. Bye bye birdie! Moving to combat, I am forced to attack Gideon with Duskwatch Recruiter, and I also attack him with Thrasios. Gideon takes 3 damage, and I then pass to Dylan. Dylan uses Gideon's zero ability, making him a 4-4 soldier until the end of turn. Moving to combat, Dylan attacks Phil with his Vampire token, and Martin with Gideon and Timna. Phil takes 1, Martin takes 6, and Dylan gains 3 two of which he loses to Timna to draw two cards in his second main phase. Dylan then plays a Swamp and casts Regnar the Redeemer, choosing not to search his library for a crab as he didn't draft him. Luke responds to this by casting Render Silent, countering the Angel, 
and Dylan passes the turn. Phil responds by plane cycling Sanctum Plow Beast, and then proceeds to his turn. Phil plays the planes that he just cycled for, and then casts Urza, Academy Headmaster. Things are about to get interesting. Phil uses his plus one ability, which is revealed to be, you gain life equal to the greatest toughness amongst creatures you control. Phil responds to this by removing a loyalty counter from Urza to crew his vehicle, and then gains four life from Urza's ability. How resourceful! Moving to combat, Phil attacks Gideon of Heart of Quran, lowering his loyalty to zero. He then ends his turn. Luke plays a planes and then casts his commander, Narset Enlightened Master. He then passes to Martin. I play a forest and then cast Windgrace's Judgment. I destroy Luke's charlatan, Dylan's Timnia, and Phil's Heart of Quran, letting Urza survive at the request of Phil. Moving to combat, I attack Dylan with my recruiter, dealing him two damage, and then pass the turn. Dylan recasts Timna and then moves to combat. He attacks Phil with his vampire, gaining a life, and then loses it to draw a card with Timna. Dylan then discards down to seven and passes to Phil. Phil uses Urza's plus one ability, which askurza.com reveals to be create two zero three white wall creature tokens with Defender. Next, Phil casts his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, which gets plus five plus five thanks to Urza being in play. Phil then ends his turn. Luke plays an island, and then casts Jeskai Ascendancy. He then asks the table if anyone will let Narset hit them, everyone says no, and Luke casts Deputy of Detention. He exiles Sisse, which Phil chooses to put back in the command zone, and moves to combat. Luke sends Narset at Martin, triggering her ability. He reveals Faith's Fetters, an island, Jace, Varin's Prodigy, and a mountain. Martin chooses not to block, taking three damage and Luke moves to his post-combat main phase. He casts Face Fetters, gaining 4 life and disabling Urza. How the mighty fall. Luke then draws and discards thanks to his ascendancy, before passing to Martin. I play a swamp and then cast Kokusho, the evening star. I then move to combat, attacking Dylan with my recruiter. He takes 2 damage, and I pass the turn. Dylan casts Kiyomuro, first to stand, who enters as a 7-7. He then ends his turn. Phil casts Worm Coil Engine, and then passes to Luke. Luke plays Scalding Tarn, and passes the turn. Martin remembers his recruiter's trigger this time, transforming it into Colin Horde Howler, and then moves to his untap step. I play a forest, and then cast Nylea, God of the Hunt. Luke counters this with Counterflux, choosing not to draw and discard from his ascendancy, and I then cast Craft the Unredeemed. I don't bother searching my library for Regna, given that Dylan has already played her, and then move to combat. I then end my turn, transforming my werewolf back into his human counterpart. Dylan casts Erebos, God of the Dead, and uses his ability, paying two life to draw a card. He plays a swamp and then moves to combat, attacking Luke with Kiemuro. Luke responds by sacrificing his fetchland, paying a life to put an island into play, and then casts a mission briefing. He draws and discards a card from Jeskai Ascendancy, keeps both cards on top of his library, and chooses not to cast a spell with Mission Briefing. Unable to find an answer to Kiyamuro, Luke blocks the spirit with his deputy. Dylan gains 7 life, and Sisse is returned to the battlefield. Dylan then passes to Phil. Phil activates Sisse's ability, searching his library for Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, and puts him into play. Phil uses his plus 1 ability, drawing a card, and plays Swiftwater Clifts, not gaining a life as a result of Erebus. He then passes the turn, untapping 2 lands with Teferi. Luke plays a mountain, and then moves to combat. He attacks Martin with his commander, revealing Righteous Confluence, two lands, and a very cryptic command version 49D off of her ability. Martin blocks Narset with his recruiter, which swiftly dies, and Luke moves to his second main phase. He casts Righteous Confluence, exiling Erebos, and making two 2-2 two, two knights with vigilance. Narset is untapped with Jeskai Ascendancy, Luke chooses not to loot, and then casts very cryptic command. He returns Kiyamuro to Dylan's hand, flips over Martin's Kakusho, and once again decides not to loot with his ascendancy. Still not finished, Luke casts Crackling Drake, whose power is currently 5. He draws a card from his Drake's ability, and then ends his turn. I cast my other commander, Rehan, Last of the Abzan, followed by Ashiok, Nightmare Weaver. I use Ashiok's plus 2 ability, targeting Dylan, exiling a plains, a swamp, and a Rochi hatchery. I then pass to Dylan. Dylan plays a planes and then casts his second commander, Ravos Soul Tender. He then passes the turn. 
Phil plays a planes and then uses Teferi's plus one ability to draw a card. Next he casts Gideon, ally of Zendikar, immediately using his minus four ability to give himself an emblem. Phil then ends his turn, untapping two lands thanks to Teferi's ability. Luke moves straight to combat, attacking Dylan with his commander. He rolls the top four cards of the library to be Order or Chaos, Keldon and Megaliths, Lux, Cannon, and Enigma Drake. Luke considers casting Chaos before blockers are declared, but decides not to. And Dylan blocks Narset with his vampire. In his post-combat main phase, Luke casts Chaos, drawing a discarding card, and untapping Narset with his ascendancy. Next, he casts Lux Cannon, drawing and discarding once more, and then passes to Martin. I use Ashok's plus two ability, this time targeting Phil. I exile Restoration Angel and two non-creature cards, and then cast Biogenic Ooze, creating a 2-2 Ooze token. Moving to combat, I attack Dylan with Krav, and he declares no blockers, spotting that I have mana available to activate his ability. Dylan takes three, and I move to my end step. I put a plus one plus one counter on my oozes, and then pass the turn. Dylan returns Divinity of Pride to his hand with Ravos' ability, and then casts it. Not liking the sound of a 9-9 flying lifelinky bird, Luke casts Mystic Confluence, choosing to counter the spell unless Dylan pays three twice, and returning Sisse to Phil's hand. Phil responds this by activating Sisse's ability, putting Kagemaro first to suffer into play from his library. Sisse is then returned to Phil's hand, Divinity of Pride is countered, and Luke draws into scars using Jeskai Ascendancy. Dylan then ends his turn. Phil sacrifices Kagemaro to his own ability, giving all creatures in play minus eight minus eight. I respond by activating Krav's ability, sacrificing my other five creatures. I gain five life, draw five cards, put five plus one plus one counters on my demon and a further five plus one plus one counters on him thanks to Rayhan's ability. The board is then wiped, Phil creates a 3-3 Worm with lifelink and a 3-3 Worm with death touch. Dylan lets Timna go to the graveyard, Phil draws a card with Teferi's plus one ability and Luke puts a charge counter on Lux Cannon. Not yet finished, Luke casts Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter and recasts his commander. He then untaps two land before passing to Luke. Luke casts Clever Impersonator, having him enter as a copy of Urza, because one near omnipotent planeswalker is clearly not enough for one game. Luke uses his minus one ability, gaining an emblem saying, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Pity he's playing a spell slinger deck. Luke then puts a charge counter on his cannon and passes the turn. I play a forest and then cast Verdant Confluence. I return Kokosho, the Evening Star, and Biogenic Ooze to my hand, and search my library for an island before putting it into play tapped. Moving to combat, I attack Dylan with Krav, which he tells me is a bad idea. I ignore his warning, and Dylan responds by flashing in Vizier of Deferment. Krav is exiled until the end of turn, and I move to my second main phase. I use Ashiok's plus two ability, once again targeting Phil. I exile Tatiova, Benthic Druid, and two non-creature cards, and then move to my end step. Krav returns to the battlefield, significantly smaller than when he left, and I end my turn. Dylan plays a swamp, and then recasts Kiamaro, first to stand. Next, he casts Helm of the Host, and passes to Phil. Phil uses Teferi's plus one ability, drawing a card. The rest of us then agree that Teferi needs to be dealt with before Phil uses his minus eight ability, and Phil casts Ugin, the ineffable. Rashmi's trigger reveals Reflecting Pool, which Phil puts into his hand, and Phil uses Ugin's minus three ability to destroy my Ashiok. Moving to combat, Phil attacks the Urza impersonator with his 4-4 lifelink worm, which receives plus one plus one from Phil's Gideon emblem. Phil gains four life, and Urza's loyalty is reduced to zero. There can only be one! Phil then plays Reflecting Pool, and moves to his end step, where he untaps two lands and passes to Luke. Luke casts Mind's Eye, drawing and discarding with Jeskai Ascendancy. He then plays a mountain, puts another charge counter on Lux Cannon, and ends the turn. I draw for turn, and Luke pays one to draw using Mind's Eye. I then play a forest, cast Ant Queen, and pass to Dylan. Dylan draws a card, and Luke pays one to draw as well. Dylan then plays a swamp, and then casts Sorin, Grim Nemesis. He uses Sorin's minus X ability, where X is two, dealing two damage to Teferi, and gaining two life. Dylan ends the turn, and Phil responds by activating Sisse's ability. He fails to find a target, causing the rest of the table to rejoice, and then proceeds to his turn. Phil draws for turn, and Luke draws as well. Phil then activates Ugin's plus one ability, creating a 2-2 spirit token, and exiling the top card of his library underneath it. 
Phil then moves to combat, attacking Luke with all of his creatures that are able to do so. Luke takes 19 damage, Phil gains 4, and Phil moves to his second main phase. He casts Migratory Root, creating 4 1 1 birds of flying, plays the planes, and remembers his Rashmi trigger. Phil reveals the top card of his library to be Nickel Bolas, Planeswalker, which he puts into his hand. Next, Phil casts Trading Post, making the most of Ugin's cost reduction ability. Still not finished, Phil activates the Fairy's minus 3 ability, Targs and Krav. I respond by creating two 1 1 insect tokens of Ant Queen, and then sacrifice all four of my creatures to Krav's ability. I gain 4 life, draw 4 cards, and Teferi's ability fizzles about the target. Phil then passes to Luke. Luke plays Temple of Triumph, choosing to keep the top card of his library where it is. Next, he casts Divine Reckoning in his graveyard for its flashback cost, which Phil chooses to save Sisse and Dylan saving Kiramoro. All other creatures are then sacrificed, and Phil puts the card exiled by a spirit into his hand. Not yet finished, Luke removes 3 charge counters from Nux Cannon to destroy Sisse and Phil responds by sacrificing her to Trading Post, returning Heart of Kirin to his hand. Luke then passes the turn. I play a Swamp, and then cast Kokusho, the Evening Star. Next I cast Spawn of Mayhem, and end my turn, to which Dylan responds by creating a 1-1 Vampire of Lifelink thanks to his transformed land. Dylan then proceeds to his turn. Dylan uses Soren's plus one ability, revealing the top card of his library to be Harsh Sustenance. Everyone other than Dylan loses 3 life, and Dylan puts a spell into his hand for later use. Next, Dylan casts Light Form, manifesting the top card of his library, and attaching the aura to it. He then casts Sage's Reverie, attaching it to the manifested card, and drawing 2 cards. Moving to combat, Dylan attacks Phil with Kilomoro, and Phil responds by casting Farm, destroying the spirit. Dylan then passes to Phil. Phil casts Nickel Bolas Planeswalker and uses his minus 2 ability to gain control of my dragon. Sad times. Next, Phil activates Ugin's plus 1, creating a 2 2 spirit and exiling the top card of his library underneath it. Phil then uses Teferi's plus 1 ability, drawing a card, plays an island, and casts Heart of Karan once again. Moving to his end step, Phil untaps 2 lands thanks to Teferi and ends his turn. Luke casts Nimbus of Frost, followed by Huatli, Warrior Poet. He uses Hawatli's plus 2 ability, gaining 5 life thanks to 2 prowess triggers, plays a planes, and casts Electrostatic Field before passing to Martin. In my upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player, and Luke puts a charge counter on his cannon. Luke then notices that he only has 5 cards left in his library, I play an island, and then casts Spitting Image, targeting my stolen dragon. Phil responds by sacrificing the creature to Trading Post, returning Wormcoil Engine to his hand. Luke, myself, and Dylan take 5 damage each, and Phil gains 15, and my spell fizzles. Undeterred, I cast Silungar's command, destroying Nicol Bolas, and return Heart of Kiron to Phil's hand. Moving to combat, I attack the fairy of my demon, lowering his loyalty to zero. I then pass the turn, and Dylan responds by flipping his manifested card face up, revealing it to be Ajani's pride mate. He then moves to his turn. Dylan plays a swamp, and then uses Soren's plus one ability, he reveals the planes as being on top of his library, which he puts into his hand, and then casts Knights of the Black Rose, becoming the Monarch. Dylan then equips Helm of the Host to his kitty cat, and moves to combat. Phil responds to this by casting Return to Dust, destroying the Helm, and Dylan proceeds to his combat phase. He attacks Ugin with his pride mate, reducing his loyalty to zero, and gains four life from the cat's lifelink. Dylan then puts a plus one plus one counter on the cat, and ends his turn drawing a card from the monarchy in his end step. Phil plays a forest and then casts Crime, returning Luke's clever impersonator to the battlefield under his control. Phil has a shapeshift to enter as a copy of Sorin, Grim Nemesis, and immediately uses his minus X ability targeting the original Sorin where X is 6. Both Sorins are sent to the graveyard and Phil gains 6 life before recasting Wormcoil Engine and Heart of Kiran. He then moves to combat, dealing me 3 damage of his spirit and passes to Luke. Luke casts Melek, is it Paragon, revealing the top card of his library to be Mystic Retrieval. Luke then casts the previously mentioned spell, returning a very cryptic command and a righteous confluence to his hand thanks to Melek, and revealing the next card in his library to be Torrential Gearhulk. Everybody other than Luke takes 1 damage from Electrostatic Field, and Nimbus of Frost becomes a 5 5 thanks to Prowess Triggers. Luke then uses Hawatli's plus 2 ability, gaining 5 life, and passes the turn. 
Everyone has dealt the damage in my upkeep and I play Verdant Catacombs. I then draw a card for turn and Luke pays one to draw as well. He reveals an island as his penultimate card and I cast Gonti, Lord of Luxury, picking one of the top four cards of Phil's library to exile. I immediately cast the exile card revealing it to be Slave of Bolas and gain control of Wormcoil Engine. Phil responds by using the worm to crew his vehicle and I destroy the newly made creature with Maelstrom Pulse. Moving to combat, I attack Phil of my demon, dealing him 4 damage. Don't ask why I didn't attack with the worm coil engine, because I honestly can't remember. I'm sure it had my reasons though. In my end step, I sacrifice the worm, creating a 3-3 lifelink and a 3-3 death touch, and then end my turn. Dylan plays a swamp, and then casts Liliana, heretical healer. Moving to combat, Dylan attacks Phil with his knights and vampire, dealing him 7 damage and gaining 2 life. He then passes to Phil. Phil plays a planes and then sacrifices his spirit to trading post. He returns Worm Coil Engine to his hand, as well as the spell exiled by his spirit, and then casts the Blasted Worm. Finally, Phil casts his commander and passes the turn. Luke reveals the last card in his library to be Ride Down, and then moves to combat. He attacks Dylan with his spirit, and Dylan declares no blockers, taking three damage. Luke then becomes the Monarch, losing two life to Knight of the Black Rose, and Dylan gains two life this way. Luke then attempts to go out with a bang, casting Torrential Gear Hulk, targeting Mystical Confluence with its ETB. He chooses to return Martin's Gonti, Dylan's Primate, and Phil's Worm Coil to the owner's hand, and then draws and discards a card with Jeskai Ascendancy. Not yet finished with his last will and testament, Luke casts Very Cryptic Command, and Martin responds by paying a life and sacrificing his fetch line to put a forest into play. Luke then chooses to flip Spawn of Mayhem face down, and return Ravos to Dylan's hand. Finished with his shenanigans, Luke moves to his end step, where he loses the game by not being able to draw a card from the monarchy. I see a theme here with Narset decks milling themselves out. Martin then moves to his turn. I play Dismal Backwater, gaining a life, and then recast Gonti, once again targeting Phil's dwindling library. I exile a card, recast Biogenic Ooze, and create a 2 2 Ooze, before creating another Ooze with Biogenic Ooze's ability. Ooze. Moving to combat, I attack Dylan with my 3-3 lifelink worm and Phil with my 3-3 death touch worm, neither of which are blocked. Dylan takes 3, Phil takes 3, I gain 3 and then move to my end step. I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on all 3 of my oozes and then pass to Dylan. Dylan plays a planes and then casts Kaya, Ghost Assassin. He uses her minus 2 ability, drawing a card and forcing Phil and Martin to discard a card, and then casts Anointed Procession. Not yet finished, Dylan casts Hero of Bladehold, and then moves to combat. He attacks Martin with his 1-1 Vampire, which Martin does not block, given that Liliana is still in play. Martin takes 1, Dylan gains 1, and Dylan then passes the turn. Phil plays a Swamp, and then uses Urza's plus 1 ability, which turns out to be Return Target Creature Card from your Graveyard to your hand. Phil returns Kagemaro, first to suffer to his hand, which he then casts and immediately sacrifices. All creatures get minus 5 minus 5, destroying all of them except for Sisse, who survives as a 3 3. Moving to combat, Phil attacks K with Sisse, lowering her loyalty to 0, and then moves to his post combat main phase. He once again casts Worm Quail Engine, and then ends his turn. Martin casts the card that he stole from Phil's library with Gonti, last one standing. Worm Quail Engine is randomly chosen to survive the board wipe, leaving Sisse as the spell's only casualty. Noticing that Phil only has three cards left in his library, Martin casts Extract from Darkness. Everybody mills two cards, and Martin puts Gaunty, Lord of Luxury, back into play. Once again, targeting Phil with the Aetherborn's ability. Martin exiles the final card in Phil's library, casts Possessed Avon, and passes to Dylan. Dylan casts Elspeth Terrell, and uses her minus two ability to create three 1-1 one -one soldiers, which is turned into six by an undead possession. Not yet finished making soldiers, Dylan casts Evangel of Heliod, creating 10 more soldier tokens. He then ends his turn, and Phil responds by sacrificing his trading post to draw a card, losing the game. That's two players who've lost to Mill. I then move to my turn. Moving straight to combat, Martin attacks Elspeth with Avon, lowering her loyalty to zero. In his second main phase, he recasts Rayhan, and then passes to Dylan. Dylan plays a swamp and then casts the harsh sustenance that he still had in his hand. My life total is reduced to a very low amount, which Dylan quickly makes zero by attacking me with all of his creatures, ending the game. 
Well, that's it for this game. We hope that you enjoyed it. We'd like to once again thank Phil for bringing his cube to Commander Knight at our LGS. We all had such a great time playing it. Remember that you can support the channel for free by hitting the like and subscribe buttons and by following us on Twitter, at 4Commander. Also, if you want to have a say in what videos are made in future episodes, then be sure to check out our Patreon page for information on how to do just that. Links in the description below. We'll see you next time.